Today's adventure begins with my shadow waving as the recording of this Thursday, December 29th, 2022. I have a new mirror that I got at the bike shop here. Well, over in Celebration that they installed this morning for me. And also a new bicycle pump. I have parked here. This is not my car, but I have parked here. Someone else also is. Oh, I put the kickstand up. I'm going on a little bike ride. Now I have passed by this before when I was pre-planning this a few months ago and this gate was locked. And according to my estimates, it's gonna be about four and a half miles down this road. And I figured a bike would make more sense than hiking five miles there, five miles back to something that I really have not pinpointed the precise destination here in the Green Swamp Wilderness Preserve here in Central Florida, wildlife management area. Now, at another point, this gate might be locked again, but today it's not. I probably could drive up in there, but since I have the bike, I'm taking the bike. Says speed limit 20. Does that apply to bicycles or just cars? You could probably get this up to 20 miles per hour through here. Oh, looks like people camp out here also. It's gonna be nice because there's a little shade, a little sunnier, it's warmed up a little bit than it was last week. Welcome everyone. Adam the Woo here. Over a hundred years ago, an event transpired at a homestead down this way, quite a ways. Now, I was not able to look on satellite view. There is no street view on this dirt road, obviously, after I veered off the pavement up there. So I'm kind of guesstimating on where this is going to be. But I have a general, I think I know where it might be. I'm going to head that way to an event, a not-so-happy event, that transpired over a hundred years ago at a homestead that I'm hoping some of the remnants are still back there. Join me. And whatever else I pass by. Here's a car approaching. Yeah, people are camped out here. And they don't call it the swamp for nothing. The green swamp. I think that's a park ranger. That looks like a park ranger. A park ranger approaching. Join me. It's sunny. It's nice out. Got waters in the backpack too. Waters, phone charger, even though I have no cell phone signal. Just in case. Join me, shall you? This is kind of a nice little area out here. So evidently that gate, the one time I came by here months ago that was locked, since then they have opened this area. They bring tents out here and camp. It's kind of neat. Again, if the gate's open, you can just drive your car back here. But I'm opting for the bicycle. 1918 was the date that I am referring to. I looked it up. So that would have been 100 and four years ago, there was a family out here that had a little homestead, and it ended tragically. A family member, someone in relation to them, tried to steal, well, did steal, $500. Over a matter of $500, their lives ended out here down this road. All right, it was only maybe a quarter of a mile before approaching this other little area says, please drive slow. This is the Green Swamp official sign for the wildlife management area. And there's a little office over here that you can check in at if you're gonna stay or whatnot. I just asked the lady at the little stand here. She asked what I was doing out here and I explained it. She kind of told me where I was gonna need to go and told me kind of where it was. So I'm on Main, even though it's a dirt road, it's known as Main Street, Main Grade. She says, so I'm here where the arrow is kind of like a shirt I have on. But you go up Main, she said go right past Powder Grade, and it's gonna be up here on the left somewhere, and there should be a big tree. She said the only reason the gate is open, because right now, it's hunting season. If it wasn't, the gate would be locked. So sometimes it is, sometimes it's not. She said at the end of January, they'll close the gate for a couple months, and then when turkey season rolls around in spring, they might reopen the gate again. So that's, that's the explanation of the gate. Once you pass the campground, you do have to check in right there. So they're gonna ask what you're doing here. She noticed I had the bicycle. Is that out for a bike ride? I said, yep. So you have to kind of explain yourself. Try to pass by there, she'll come out, ask what you're doing. But you can bring a bike out here and ride around. Also that speed limit sign right there, back up to 20. Went from 20 to 15, back up to 20. I think I'm going like seven. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe nine.
Yeah, this is much easier than walking this. And the terrain, it's a little bumpy, but not too bad. Got some big wheels on this bike, so. As of now, I'm okay. I feel like this is good Bigfoot territory out here. Well, skunk ape. Florida's more skunk ape territory. Oh! Slipped a little bit. What has happened? The mud is slick. What just happened? All right, Maine to Orange Lake. Now, here's a big tree, but this is not the road she mentioned. There's a big tree here, though. Not just Sasquatch is. What's the plural of Sasquatch? Not just Sasquatch, skunk apes, or Bigfoot type of terrain, but I'm sure there's quite a few gators in there. A one lane bridge, wheeled vehicles only. It's a cool bridge. Maybe even the swamp thing down there. Yeah, remember the movie The Swamp Thing? Love it. Perfect area for the swamp thing. The thing I love about that original Swamp Thing movie is when he grew his arm back, you know, his arm was like ripped off or something and ended up growing back out like a twig. Started to like poke out of where his like arm was and grew into another arm. I always remember that. I haven't seen the gators yet through here. I'm gonna keep looking for some gators too. There's a series of really nice, very well constructed bridges. This is like the third or fourth one that I've gone over. But take a look at this scenic, real Florida beauty here, through here. The cypress knees, the cypress trees. This is about as real Florida as you can get right here. What'd you say, bird? That bird was talking to me. This is how a horror films start. A lot of downed trees from storms. Here's one that's been uprooted. My first inclination is to walk across this, a Goonie style, but I don't think that'd be wise. Yeah, because it'll probably sink down in there. And another uprooted tree over here. See the root system there? This is a really good time of the year to do this because I would imagine in the summertime, this would be brutal out here in the heat because there are some unshaded areas. There are a few bugs too. Some flies, little biting gnats, but nothing too extreme. Nothing too extreme, but they're out here. This is definitely out here a ways. Probably about five miles. But I have reached the corner of Maine and Powder. So I'm looking for a big tree somewhere up here. A distinctive tree. A lot of puddles and a little, little bit of flooding out here left over from some storms and whatnot. As this vehicle goes by, I do believe this is the tree. I don't know why I believe that, but I'm thinking this is the tree because there's a path here. Okay, there's a lot more bugs as I walk deeper into the woods. Is this it? Oh, I see the, I see the little cabin back there. Okay, I'm gonna put my bike right here. This homestead out here believed belonged to Sarah, also known as Sally, and Isham Stewart. And it's not too far off the road. So where my bike is, my bike's right there. Where was my bike? Bike's right there. The road I was riding in on isn't too far. It looks like maybe 50, 75 yards, give or take, off of Maine. Even though it's a dirt road, it's, they consider it the main road. Oh, 
Oh yeah, look over there. There is their home. Where they spent their last moments. There's a little bit of info online about it, a few articles and a few website posts and whatnot. A couple other people have been out here as well. But I wanted to kind of see this with my own eyes. Very interesting story here in the backwoods of Florida. Another vehicle going down the road over there. You can hear it. Car going by. Or a truck, I should say. Over here is their final resting place. Now it is said from what I was reading that the the couple was not discovered for an entire week afterwards. Oh, someone's pulling back up in here. Someone's pulling up in there. Probably wonder what my bike's doing out there. Maybe I should get my bike and pull it up a little farther in here. Someone out here, my hunter out here doing a little sightseeing. Also wanted to see the, the headstone. I'll walk back over there in a minute, but this was where they lived, right here. Notice the, notice the ferns and the grass growing on top of the roof here. And then you got the wood foundation down here. It's got some flowers growing out of the stump. This is still standing 104 years later. Got some mud daubers up here. Little humble abode for the couple, the Stewarts. Hey, I'm over listening to the, the guy with his daughter. He said that this might not have been part of the main house. It might have been just like a subsidiary section of the house. Very interesting. I'm gonna go talk to him. Okay, I just got some really good info from a local who grew up in this area when he was a kid. Him and his family, he's a, his family is a ranch out in this area. But when they were younger, they would round up cattle out here. And he showed me, he told me an area I could go to after this. There's gonna be some remnants and some some other buildings and whatnot. But he was saying that this was like the shed. This was a pump house back there. Contrary to what I have seen on the interwebs, of course you can't really trust the internet, that was not the house. The house was here. This is according to a local rancher who was out here showing his daughter the spot who I talked to. I was heading to get him on camera. But he's, his car, his truck pulling off over there. He said this is where the foundation was. And it kind of makes sense. It kind of looks like this is where a foundation, you can see his truck pulling off over in the distance. He also said there might be a mule barn back over here too. So I'm gonna go try to find the mule barn. Now, according to him, his story, that the money was buried and kept, the $500, which back then, you know, 100 years, that was a lot of money, was buried under the floorboards of the pump house or the, the, the shed, but this, is where they had their very final moments, sleeping in bed. And it just kind of all ended here. And I believe it was the grandson, let's look it up again real quick, but I believe it was the grandson and his friend that stole the money and then just hightailed it. Joshua Browning, who was Sarah Sally's grandson and his friend, John Tucker, man, these bugs are wild. They were the ones Man, bugs. Her own grandson. $500. Supposedly buried. According to a local. And the floorboards, not here. This is not where the, this is not their house. I'm sorry, this was their house. Not this. 
but that's where the money was hidden and stashed, obviously because she was the, he was the grandson. He knew where the money was. Now what floorboard could it have been underneath? So here's the floorboards here. Could it, be an, it could have been anywhere in here. You know, when I first looked at this, it does look like a very small accommodation, but a hundred years ago, you know, this is just like humble accommodations for someone. Got the tin roof up here. Very interesting. Very interesting. I do love that this is still standing. I don't want to say it's like a real life murder mystery, like or a who done it or anything like that. Because it's not a mystery, it was proven. But it is a very interesting story over a century old. There's still some relics left. Okay, with the foundation here where the house was and the pump house where the money was stashed over there. There's a few other people coming over here. Another truck is pulled up. I didn't think there's gonna be this many people out here, but I guess people are in the area and they get done. If they gotta get done doing hunting and stuff out here, they wanna stop by and see the Stewart home. So there's this board here. Now, I don't know if this was originally on the house or if they placed this on there after the fact. Another local behind me telling a story to his wife. Said he had the axe, chopped him up. Even says it right there. Oh, there's a little more info by Sally's grandson, Joshua Browning, and his friend, John Tucker. Now, this is a headstone that was placed here way after their original headstones were, you know, a week later they were seen. They were found and on the property of their house, they were laid here. Got one larger one and then one smaller one down here. Okay, there is a date on there. Does that say 1917? Okay, it's inscribed Mr. and Mrs. Here's a smaller headstone. All right, got some more local info. It's interesting, so this says 1918, but if you notice over here on these, this is inscribed 1917. Now I'm also getting some conflicting reports from two of the locals. That gentleman was out here showing his granddaughter this spot. Yeah, here doing some hunting, decided to also show some of his relatives some history out here. He was saying that this really was the house. He's kind of reiterating what I was kind of reading on the internet, that they had to remove the wall and they pulled the bodies out in the bed and then brought them over here. That's kind of conflicting with what the first gentleman said. I kind of believe the first gentleman though, this kind of makes sense that that might not have been the house. Also, the guy and his granddaughter who are now pulling away in that truck over there, also confirmed that there are two houses over this way the first guy was telling me about called the Ellis property. And the guy that just walked off, the second gentleman that I talked to, stated that it was not $500 in cash, it was gold. Possibly $500 worth of gold or maybe a lot more gold. He was saying, according to his account as being a local, passed down through generations of stories, that the gold was never found. So the grandson never got what he thought was going to be his reward, his jealousy, that the family, which I do believe that the house was here, he had found all the gold. This could have been gold, could have been $500. This could have been their house. This could have been their house. 
There could have been $500 under the floorboards here, or there may have been a pile of gold under the floorboards here. I do love yeah. how stories morph and are told through generations, whether you know if they are true or not. Could be true. The wall over there could have been removed, so they could have been pulled out by their bed through there. Doesn't make a lot of sense on why that would be fact, but it could be. Or someone could have just made that up and then through the years, it's restated and reiterated so many times that it becomes true. One thing that is for certain though, they did perish here on this property, whether it be in this old pump shed, shack, barn, or in their homestead right there that has been demolished and torn down. Because they are laid to rest right over there. I'm not seeing a mule house out there. No mule house remnants. Could have been over in here. I'm gonna make my way back to the bike, see if I can find the Ellis property. The only reason I know it's called the Ellis property is what the last guy told me. I'm just going off of what locals are telling me. All unplanned. There's something rustling over there. Maybe a deer, a bear, maybe just the wind. An interesting tale. Mosquitoes everywhere, bugs, biting flies and gnats. I can hear one by my ear. Well, you can't hear it because it's by my ear, but I can't imagine the summers is even like way more prevalent with bugs. Could be the pump house, could be the real house. I don't know. As you know, as an interesting story. This would make sense that this would be the house, but I think in reality, the house was right there, as I, the first gentleman said. Going only off of what the two locals just told me. They said there will be a bend in the road, so I got my bike parked here. The bend goes to the left, extremely to the left. They said, do not follow this. There should be a pathway into the woods. Again, this is how horror films start. I'm gonna see if there's another former homestead back in here, just based on the two locals that approached me. It does make sense that this would be a former cow pasture because you got some of the barbed wire up here that has seen better days. I don't know how far I wanna root into the woods, especially as I said, the, this is the season when people are out here trying to get the game. And I'm not really dressed appropriately with bright colors. So I don't know. I don't know how far I want to go off into the woods. It gets pretty muddy that way too. It's like flooded back in there. Maybe not the best idea. And I, I don't even know if this is the road. There's another little kind of sort of road there. Got some tracks there too. Now I'm gonna go back. Could be anywhere back in there. Might not even exist anymore. Might just be local going off their memory of when they were younger. If it is back there, a lot of flooding and rainwater, standing rainwater back in there as well. And the swamps. And I do not have a good cell phone signal. I've got like one bar sometimes, no bars another time. Can't really look much up. Probably wouldn't be able to see it on satellite view anyway. If it's just remnants, but. At least I got the spot I was looking for. A lot of standing water. Now I'm slowly coming back up. I actually went a little further to try to find the other spot, which I couldn't. When it comes to the Stewart place, which is over in the woods over here, I stumbled on a video a while back from a guy named Florida Trailblazer. That's how I originally found out about this place. And then I kind of did a little deep dive on my own through other stuff. I want to give a little mention to him. He's how I originally heard of the spot like a year ago and it took me till now to get out here. Glad I checked it out. Okay, now I'm second guessing myself. Here's another sharp turn. Maybe this was what the local was telling me about. And this is the path. Gosh, now I'm second guessing myself. I don't know. 
I don't see anything back in there and I sure don't want to go. Yeah, I'm not going to walk it back in there. Back over at the Stewart place now. It's right here. About to do the four and a half mile bike commute back over there. Stay hydrated though first. seem like locals, I'm going to ask them. After talking to that gentleman and his family, he said he's been going around this premises out here for five or six years, knows this place like the back of his hand, according to him. Well, I'm paraphrasing. He does not know any of the other cabins I was referring to that are down there. Could have been the other local. Maybe it was a memory from his youth that he's recalling. According to this guy, third local I've talked to today, he confirms, according to him, he does not know of any other cabins that are down there that are still standing. And the Stewart house is back in there. Kind of interesting. Three different groups of families came out. That guy was showing his, his family, the Stewart house, and the guy was showing his daughter earlier, and another guy was showing his granddaughter. And these aren't these are people that are out here doing other things. They're like, oh, I know a tale, a little folklore, a little true story out here in the Florida swamp wilderness. Okay, I've been riding my bike for about two miles. I'm almost towards back towards the end. And one of the original locals that told me where it was is going to pick me up in his truck. I'm going to throw the bike in the back and he's going to take me down there. He's approaching now in this truck. Again, this is how horror films we get. Yeah, have a flat, dude. No, 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 he's taking me back out there. <laughs> this is different. Yeah, this is the right spot. This is where I was. Check it out. Well, the houses, believe it or not, is right there. Oh, they okay. They in very well. Yeah. So they're over there in the woods? Yeah, I'll show you. There you had uh, been a long ride. I'm going back if you want to. Yeah, I'll just check it real quick and yeah. I can, I'll, can I ride back. I'll show you what, yeah, That's like a five mile ride. Right. Oh, it's around the tree. Right here. So there's one and there's the other one? There's one here, there's one there, and one there. There's two houses right there. Look at this thing. This is great. Yeah, I would have passed right past this. Look at this thing. Oh my gosh. This is amazing. Look at the porch here. Oh, there's another one around the back. Oh, yeah, there's, there's two side by side. Holy cow, this is amazing. This is someone's home right here. It was someone's home. That is awesome. 
Yeah. No, I appreciate it. Wow. Uh, this the old bathtub right there. <laughs> That's cool. This is in better shape than the Stewart place. Yeah, these were, these were really in good, in good shape. I actually think somebody has put some in plants off of it. The last time I was here, there was a window there. So oh, right here, yeah. Where the lady was standing. You said, so you said someone from the Lakeland Gazette? No, I'm saying somebody over the years that took the pound or something off this other day. The reporter from Lakeland years ago. Oh, the Lakeland newspaper. The Lakeland newspaper that come here and was doing a story and took pictures on this and the other one. And I, I was out here talking to him while he was here. And that had to be probably 30 years ago. Was and this the one that they said maybe there was like a ghost in the window of? Yeah. When they developed a film. Look at that. Wow. It looked like there was somebody standing in the way. That's neat. What was the people that owned the property's name? Ellis. Ellis, that's what it was. I couldn't remember what you told me. This is the Ellis homestead, and I think this is actually older than that one. Oh, there's another one back there? No, the, the, the Stewart. Oh, the Stewart one. Yeah. Wow, I went right along that main road. I missed, didn't even so, see these. Yeah, you can't, you can't see them. I only got the front of the wind. Are they worse in the summer, I hear the bugs? Oh, yeah. They hadn't been bad for a few days with the cold weather, they don't come out a lot. Look at this <laughs> bathtub. <laughs> There's the bathtub. What season is it right now? Uh, gun season. Okay. The deer, hog. Gotcha. She just came up, she hadn't been here in many years. Me, me and her brother got a tent. We, we mostly just go sit in the stand. We don't call you This is great. Yeah, thanks, thanks for showing me this. Yeah. That is awesome. So this was the spot I was at. I just walked too far down. It's over in the woods there. I walked all the way down there where the flooding was. gonna do it for today from the back someone's truck that I just met a couple minutes ago I'll see you in the next video the vlog is over